My name is Glenn Ferruta. I'm the director of the Gastrointestinal Eosinophilic Diseases Program at Children's Hospital Colorado and the University of Colorado School of Medicine. My name is Joanne Masterson. I'm a PhD scientist and an assistant professor at the University of Colorado School of Medicine. We published an article in the journal Gut entitled Eosinophil Mediated Signaling Attenuates Inflammatory Responses in Experimental Colitis. Since eosinophils are normal residents of the intestinal tract and increased in inflammatory conditions such as eosinophilic GI diseases, inflammatory bowel diseases, and others, we hypothesize that eosinophils and their preformed granule proteins or inflammatory molecules may in fact participate in gastrointestinal dysfunction. To address this hypothesis, we teamed with our longtime collaborator at the Mayo Clinic Scottsdale and performed a series of experiments in mice that either had eosinophils as a normal part of their intestinal tract or in fact had eosinophils that were absent in the intestinal tract, termed fill mice. We performed a series of experiments in which colitis was induced in these mice and measured histological, physiological, and molecular markers of inflammation. So in slide one, you can see that eosinophilus mice fare worse in models of acute colonic inflammation. H&E photomicrographs and scores show that these mice exhibit significantly more inflammation. This is further exemplified in this Kaplan-Meier survival curve, defining the fact that eosinophil-deficient mice die much more rapidly than their wild-type littermates. So in determining the mechanism behind this, we found a striking compensatory infiltration of neutrophils that was consistent with the increased pro-inflammatory cytokine and neutrophil-associated chemokine profiles. To understand the mechanisms involved with this finding, we performed a series of array analyses. Most notable amongst these was the finding that in comparison to control uninflamed mice, we see a significant increase in the expression levels of ALOX15 gene. This is the lipoxygenase 15, a lipid biosynthetic enzyme, in inflamed wild-type mice undergoing DSS colitis. However, we find that there was a significant and dramatic attenuation in the expansion of ALOX15 expression in mice deficient in eosinophils undergoing DSS-induced colitis. Tandem LCMSMS analysis of lipid mediator expression levels in these colonic tissues revealed a market deficiency in the lipid 1017 DIHDHA, also known as protectin D1 or PD1. This is an omega-3 DHA derivative that synthesis is mediated by the enzyme pathway involving 1215 lipoxygenase. Mirroring the expression of its enzyme, we determined an increase in the expression of PD-1 lipid in inflamed wild-type mice. However, we found that there was a significant and dramatic attenuation of the expanded expression of PD-1 lipid in inflamed eosinophil-deficient mice. This PD-1 lipid, as the name suggests, is a protective lipid mediator involved in anti-inflammatory and pro-resolution pathways in the response to acute inflammation. So lastly, we asked, if one was to restore the presence of PD-1 lipid by delivery of the PD-1 isomer to inflamed eosinophilus mice undergoing DSS colitis, what would the effect on disease be? You can see here that reintroduction of exogenous PD-1 isomer attenuated histologic measures of inflammation, as well as decreased the numbers of infiltrating neutrophils into the colons of these eosinophilus mice. So to summarize, in the absence of eosinophils, we see that mice succumb to a greater colonic inflammation during acute experimental models of colitis. Neutrophilic inflammation is increased and is accompanied by increases in pro-inflammatory molecules. We see diminished levels of ALOX15, the lipid biosynthetic enzyme, and a decrease in the pro-resolving lipid mediator PD-1. We finally find that administration of this protectin D1 isomer attenuates inflammatory indices of colitis. We found in contrast that eosinophils were actually helpful in models of acute colonic inflammation. We found that they were capable of acting in anti-inflammatory and pro-resolving manner. So the potential impact of our findings have both relevance for eosinophils as well as the molecule protectin. From a scientific standpoint, our results suggest that eosinophils may in fact participate in host health. From a clinical standpoint, the molecule protectin may in fact be a molecule that can be used in clinical studies to improve mucosal integrity and help to heal inflammatory processes.